Welcome to a very special presentation. Today, I want to celebrate the first year of the Environment Art Mastery course. I want to share very valuable information to help you on your journey. If you are a beginner environment artist, but also if you are a professional, if you're an uh, expert, you can always refine your process. The moment you think that you know everything there is to know about something is when you stagnate. As I also want to demonstrate some of the qualities that can help you take your environment art to the next level. And uh, one of them is just sitting down and doing the work, which is very hard sometimes. We overthink, we overcomplicate things, or we take the less optimal order of process. Once you do one thing, over and over and over again, you develop a process. For me, environment art is like that. So if I have to make a map, doesn't matter what kind of map, I have a process. I can figure out what to make. If I, even if it's something very different than what I've did before, I have a universal process that I can replicate and get to a good result. And uh, it's the same with videos. Like I've, I've been doing videos for a while now. So I, I went through a lot of common mistakes. You know, the people do like I lost files. I was using the wrong programs or the wrong settings or the audio sucks or the video sucks. So I've, I've made so many mistakes that now I know the things to avoid and the things to, to do. I don't know what the end result will be, but I have an intention and my intention is to make something that's going to be helpful to a lot of people, but at the same time celebrating all the amazing work the members of the Environment Art Mastery course have done in the last year. Why did I start this course? My answer for this is I love environment art. This profession gave me the life that I have now. I have a very happy life. I'm very content with all the things that I got from environment art through environment art. And also it's a field that there's so much to do, so much to explore. It's constantly evolving. You know, you need to be on top of your game. You need to learn new tools. And I really love this about this profession, which is not the case in other professions. I felt like I wanted to contribute to the world of environment art, all that I learned up to this point. I created this course with the intention that no matter your skill level, you can develop your process. Because once you have a process, you can do things. And if I could go back in time and give myself one advice when I was learning all this stuff, which advice would it be? And it would be to learn the process, don't skip the process, because I used to do this for a long time and it really affected my learning. I could have done more if I had a better process. And I'll give an example. When I started my career, uh, it was making maps for Half-Life. With a BSP, it was not even modeling. The parts that I really liked was the art, the texturing, the lighting, the visuals. I didn't care so much about the, the, the level design. And that was my problem back then, because I was always skipping the level design part. I, was, I always wanted to get to the art phase. So I would create these beautiful corners, let's say, but I would never figure out how to actually complete the map. Because instead of figuring out the entire map first on a simple drawing, just a top-down drawing, something that anyone can do in one minute, I was going straight to the detailing, to the texturing, to these stages that are better off done later in the process. So this cost me a lot of time back then because I had so many unfinished projects because I would always get to a point where I wouldn't know where to go next. That's the biggest value that you can get out of this course. You're going to develop your own process so you can do things easier, faster, more complex because you're not going to be using your brain power figuring out what to do. And an example is uh, going to the gym. I love going to the gym now, but for one specific reason. All the thinking is done for me. So I was spending so much brain power just to figure out even what machines to do. And then that just made me not want to do it. But now I train with an amazing group of trainers. They are professional weightlifters. All I have to do is just show up there. So I show up there and it's on the boards. Oh, today you're doing this, 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 this. I just have to do the exercises and they're always watching me. So because the thought is out of the way, I can just focus on the workout, which is the fun part. 
that's the part that gives the rewards, right? And working in an environment or a character or a render is the same. Once you have a process, you can remove a lot of the thought and go straight to the fun part. A lot of the knowledge that you you'll find in the course is tribal knowledge in a way. Things that I learned from amazing artists that are much more experienced, watching them more, asking questions, working with them, teaching them, figuring out new ways to make things. I learned a lot of valuable skills that are not easily accessible there. I learned this from other people. This, a lot of these things are not necessarily in a book. And the people that I learned from, they were some of the best in the field. I wanted to make this knowledge accessible and put my own spin. Right now, with environment art, the tools are very advanced. The knowledge is out there, it's infinite. You know, there's so much information. It's easy to get overwhelmed and get lost in what to do. I wanted to create a course to teach people to make environments. So that's how I want to contribute to the environment art community. Part of the tutorial is the mentorship group. And uh, every now and then I ask, I get asked when the new slots will open up. And the answer is, I don't know. I feel like I'm at capacity right now. Before I made this course, I, I was doing mentorships one-on-one and they were very hard to do. A lot of energy from my part because the call is not only one hour, but it's one hour of intense brain power. And I have to think before the class too. So it was not scalable. I could do a few people per year, but I couldn't do a lot of people. I designed the course in a way that it works as a self-mentorship. You follow the steps there and you figure it out the parts that you don't know. Because there are some gaps in the tutorial that you're gonna need to fill by yourself. And these are more program specific, how to do this in program X, how to do the grid step in Blender instead of in Maya, but you can figure that out. That's irrelevant because what's important is the process. So when you get the tutorial, you have enough content for one year worth of training. It took me a little more than one year to make the Spanish style environment as I was making the tutorial. It will also take you some time if you want to go through the whole process. And of course, people can do this much faster than I did. This is not a tutorial that you're going to buy it and watch in one week. You're going to binge watch. That's not the point. This is like a program. You have lessons and then I say, OK, so now do this. And then you take your time, you know, so I teach you how to come up with an idea for your map, which is something that's very hard for a lot of people to come up with something they feel comfortable working with. They're not dependent on using concept art from other artists or from copying other people's works. They can stand up on their own. You're gonna learn that. So I'm gonna tell you techniques on how to come up with ideas that resonate to you. And then I tell you, okay, so now you take your time, figure out the idea. And then when you're done, you come back and watch the rest of the tutorial. So that was the way that I found to make the mentorship program accessible. So there's two layers. There is the self mentorship that you can do with the tutorial on Gumroad and the master edition, which is closed right now. And I don't see myself opening it again anytime soon. But it doesn't matter. The video content is incredibly powerful. And I'll show works today that were done just with the video content. And then you will see the kind of works that people are creating just by watching the videos. These are a bit more experienced users. They already knew how to use Substance Designer, for example, how to make tileables, right? They already dominated some of the fundamentals, but they didn't necessarily know how to create a big environment, how to come up with an idea, how, how do you do the design, like what's the order? But then they figured out with the curves. So how I'm creating this video? So I planted a seed and I'm gonna let it grow. So I came up with this cards with just some thoughts, and then I'm just gonna create the video, and then in the end, I'm gonna polish it up. And it's the same process for environment art too. You don't need to know every single detail before starting work. You just need a seed. You need to have a good seed. You plant a good seed, and then it's gonna grow into an awesome work over time, because you also have to develop some qualities as a person, not just technical skills, but character qualities. I observed five very important qualities to develop if you want to make awesome stuff in life in general. I'm just speaking from my perspective here because I'm an environment artist. But all these concepts, they apply to any skill that requires mastery. The five qualities that I'm going to talk about and also to show by example how they were demonstrated are intense focus, determination, resourcefulness, bravery, and lastly, passion. 
And there were five members that demonstrated very strong aspects of this. So I picked five examples from the Discord, and I'm going to show how they demonstrated these qualities. These are by no means the only people that demonstrated this. It's just I'm looking for examples that we can all understand to. And I also want to reward these five people for putting so much work and passion. They are examples. And I really want to encourage these qualities in other people too. The first quality that I want to talk about to develop if you want to become a better environment artist is to develop the capacity for intense focus. And the kind of focus that I'm talking about here is not just being able to sit down and work for one, two or three hours straight. It's the capacity to have a long-term kind of focus. A great example of this quality was demonstrated by Valentin. So Valentin has been working on this beautiful pool scene for about a year now. And this is a very complex scene. It's based on a real location. It required a lot of props to be made. And this is the kind of work that can only be done over time. You know, this is not the kind of work that you can just sit down and in one week or two weeks just uh, bang it out. That's not how it works. To do something like this, you need to dedicate yourself for months and maintain the intensity. And Valentin demonstrated this so well. Since he joined the server, he's been working uh, really hard and learning from his uh, mistakes. For example, when he started the scene, he was making all the assets mostly in one object because it's easier to export. But then later down the road, when it was time to finalize, we discovered that that kind of geometry doesn't work well with Lumen. He creates a lot of visual artifacts. So he had to go back and re-export some files. But the point here is, it is through these frustrations that we get better, that we develop experience. It's going through these problems that we avoid them in the future. So Valentin demonstrated this capacity to stay dedicated to his map fully for a year. And this is very admirable. If you can give your love, your attention, your passion, your talent to a project for a year, I'm sure that you're going to be able to create something awesome. The next quality that I want to talk about is determination, which means knowing what you want and working for it no matter what. And this quality was really well demonstrated by Paola. So Paola is from Colombia. Before she got the course, uh, she messaged me about some questions, uh, very good questions about how the course works. Uh, she wanted to make sure that she was making the right investment because she was determined to achieve her goals as an environment artist. And she showed that determination from day one. She has always been one of the most active members in the group. She participated in every Sunday call. And this determination became very clear to me when she was starting this project. And she made the first design block out. And I told her that the, the map looked huge, like a really big scope. Uh, and that it would take me like a long time to finish that. And she answered by saying that she knew it was a challenge, but she wanted to face that challenge. Mad respect to this. You know, someone who faces a challenge consciously. You know it's a challenge, but you, you would do your best to overcome this challenge. And her environment has been very challenging for her because it's a big environment. And she's been doing an amazing job breaking this down in smaller pieces and develop her skills along the way. So during this time, she got much better at texturing, uh, her workflow. Like she's learning a lot with this. And she already built a beautiful scene, even without all the polish, even without all the finishing touches, it already looks uh, beautiful and very close to what she was looking for when she started, which is to hit Pixar kind of style. Uh, I think she's getting pretty close and I'm very excited to see uh, where she would take this environment next. The next quality that I want to talk about is resourcefulness. And this means being able to find the answers to what you're looking for, to learn new skills if you need to, to be a jack of all trades in a way, but mastering one skill, which is environment. 
So Alan has demonstrated this resourcefulness since he joined the server. So his first environment was a big Japanese village. And at some point he realized that the scope was just way too big. And he stopped this project and worked on a smaller scene. He wanted to have something done quick. And that scene was a great detour that he took, because he had some fun, he created some materials. But then he went back to the course with a different idea to make a, a medieval village. His goal with this environment was not only to go through the whole process, but also to develop as an artist. So he took up concept drawing, which was something that he didn't do before, and he created some awesome concepts for his uh, environment over the screenshot. He worked on the art block out, he tried uh, different techniques, he explored uh, more stylized, more photorealistic, he's very resourceful. And if you want to get good as an environment artist, you can't be the kind of person who's always waiting for a tutorial to teach you how to do things, or always asking someone else how to do things. You need to figure it out by yourself. And of course, it's okay to ask questions. We should ask questions, right? But there will be many times that we have to find the answers ourselves. The answers are not outside. Sometimes the answers are inside. So Alan demonstrated the this resourcefulness, this capacity to take up different skills and, you know, to get really better at his craft. So mad props to him. I, I can't wait to see how this scene is gonna look when it's done because I think it will look very impressive. Next quality to develop to become an amazing environment artist is bravery or courage. One person demonstrated this very clearly during the last year, which was Gael. So Gael has been working on this French village for a few months now, and he started really well, he was very excited, and the progress was going very quick, but then he hit a roadblock at some point, and his motivation took a hit, which is very common when you're working on environment, because usually environments take months to be done. And it's very common along the way to question yourself, to have doubts, but we have to overcome this. And I noticed that for almost every project that I worked on, I had these doubts at some point. They always come at some point. And these are things like, oh, should I abandon the project? Or it's too hard? Or I'm not going to be able to finish it? But then you need to have courage. You need to be brave to push forward and take the bull by the horns, metaphorically speaking. So when Gael noticed that the direction he was going wasn't what he wanted, he rebooted his project. And this was a very brave decision, because it can backfire. A lot of times you reboot the project for no need, or you start reworking things for no reason. And I've seen this problem before in uh, games that I worked on, where something is good, but then people start to double gas, and then they start iterating and noodling, and changing things just for the sake of changing. And then the, the, the map gets worse. Only for the changes to be reverted to what they were before. So this is one of the pitfalls of pivoting too much. But Gael made the right decision. Like he trusted his gut, his in instincts. And I'm very happy he did because the, the new art block out he made is more powerful than what he had before. It's simpler in terms of execution. He reused the assets more, but the space feels much bigger, it feels much more impressive. So I'm very excited to see the final version of this map. There is still uh, quite some work left to be done, so Gael will need to demonstrate the other qualities to, to, to get to the end. But I'm very happy to see how beautiful this art blockout looks. And the last quality that I want to talk about today to develop to become a better environment artist is having the fire, having the passion. And one person that demonstrated this very clearly to me was Ari. So before Ari joined Discord, he showed a lot of interest in joining the group and he was very excited about environment art and he told me that he just, he, he can't wait to go to the next level and I felt his enthusiasm, his passion, his fire for environment art and that also inspired me. So he joined the server just 
a few months ago, but during this time he already improved his skills so much because he's showing this fire every day. When he works on his environment, I can feel the passion. Like he is putting all this drive, all this raw energy into the environment. And if you can do this for a long enough time, you can create really amazing things. Because environments, in a production point of view, they have a deadline. Sometimes you have to make the environment in two months, sometimes in five or six, doesn't matter. And to get an amazing result, you need to have this constant fire. You can't just be like super excited in the beginning and then you, you get demotivated and then you don't touch things for like a long time and then you get motivated again and then you get demotivated. If that happens to you, I'm not saying it's wrong because sometimes we have problems going on in our lives that will cause this and we need to fix those problems. But I'm just talking about people that are, you know, in a good situation, they're comfortable and they just start to slack off and the energy dissipates. But also we have to keep in mind that, like a friend of mine once said, that art is not a bakery. Art is not a place where you can come any time of the day and there's gonna be fresh bread. Some days we are inspired and the art just flows. And in these days we have to use all the power we have, all the passion we have, to transmute that drive into something physical. If you study a little about alchemy and how the four elements, or rather the five elements, as they consider, represent different aspects of reality, the fire means energy, raw energy. And we can transmute this from passion. We turn passion and love into an environment. And Ari demonstrated this so clearly to me. So may, may this be an example for you too. How can you harness your power to drive your goals? Where are you wasting your energy? Where are, are you wasting your passion? Be mindful of these things. Because I don't know how it's possible to make a great work of art without passion, without intensity, without determination, without resourcefulness, without bravery. These are just some of the qualities that we can develop to go to the next level. All right, so that's all that I have today. I hope this presentation was uh, useful to you. And let me know in the comments what you think about it. I love to read your comments. I'm so happy that I have such an awesome community. Always passionate people posting positive things. I think I'm attracting the great kind of people. The people with heart, the people with passion, the people with determination, the people with courage, the people with desire, the people with fire. Thank you for being a part of my life, of this channel. Thank you for all the support over the last year. I wish you the best luck. See you in the next video.